Before we dive into this episode today, we did something really special. One of the most popular downloaded episodes on my podcast last year was with Emily Ahrens, all about how to align your energy. And one of the most popular episodes on her podcast was when she interviewed me about spirit guides. So we both surveyed our listeners and took the top questions about spirit guides and energy alignment, and we're answering them for you. Part one was over on Emily's podcast, Aligned and Unstoppable, where she interviewed me on the top questions asked by our audiences about spirit guides. So I will link to that in our show notes. This episode is part two, where I interview her from the top questions asked about energy alignment. This episode is so good, so I can't wait for you to listen. Stay tuned. Welcome to Spiritual and Ambitious. I'm your host, Whitney McNeil. I'm a certified medium and spiritual teacher, and I help spiritual and ambitious souls just like you live your life purpose through your career and attract abundance by connecting into your intuition and spirit guides. Let's get spiritual and ambitious. Welcome to another episode of the Spiritual and Ambitious Podcast. I have my friend Emily Ahrens back on the podcast. She was with us in December of 2022 to help us with energy alignment and removing negative energies from our lives. And it was such a popular podcast episode, we decided to do something super special. And you, if you're listening, probably already know, I sent out a form for all the questions about energy alignment and spirit guides. So first and foremost, if you haven't listened to the episode that we recorded on her podcast, it just aired yesterday. So I want you to go over to Aligned and Unstoppable. That was part one, all about spirit guides. And this is part two, all about energy alignment. And what's really cool is she asked me this question about, so how do spirit guides help you remove energy blocks? And someone actually asked us this, which is a great question. So I gave my answer and now I'm going to ask her to give her answer. But before we dive into it, welcome Emily to the podcast. Thank you. And I was just thinking like, I can't believe that was December. That was, it felt like it was yesterday. So I guess time is relative. (laughs) Every time I talk to you, I feel like time doesn't exist. And I feel like we could talk for over an hour and not realize it. And because we just recorded part one. And now I feel like, did it really? Was it 30 minutes? Oh my gosh, we better hurry if we have other meetings. So (laughs) with that being said, I'd like your take on how can spirit guides help us remove energy blocks? Because you specialize in energy. Yeah. So. What I started to share on my podcast was a few years ago, I channeled energy healing where we went on a journey to connect with our spirit guides and multiple guides showed up in different capacities. You know, one is holding your head and one is holding your belly and one is holding your feet and one is just passing through and what like all of these different energies all at the same time and this experience. And it's one of my favorite ones to listen to. It was back from May of 2020. I've since recorded multiple that were kind of similar, but that is like one of my absolute favorites because being very sensitive as a highly sensitive, you know, empathic kind of gal, energy healing moves my physical body as well sometimes. And I always get this beautiful response. So we can connect with our spirit guides so that we can ask them to remove blockages or bring our attention to certain places or to connect us to the practitioner who can help us with that specific issue. And they can also work on us. And so, you know, like this morning, I was telling one of my team members, I was talking to a tree and she was, obviously, (laughs) because I feel really connected out in nature. So I go out every single day and it's kind of like for me when I'm talking to a tree and I'm going a little bit off on a tangent here, I understand that. It's almost like when someone like whispers your name or you feel like you heard somebody call your name and it's like you look around like, where did that, who called me? And so that's how I feel when I'm in nature, when trees want to share a message with me. And so I found the tree that wanted to share a message and I just kind of lean in and listen. 
And so I feel like whether it's a tree or it is you talking in your own head and connecting with guides, asking for that next level of healing is right there at your fingertips. Mm. Just so beautiful. I don't think that we think about that. We think about guides. We think about what can I actionably do, but we're not aware a lot of times that we're receiving messages through nature and through different sentient beings and, and energy. So it's really beautiful Yeah, and so grounding too. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So if we're wanting to remove an energy block, just ask, you know? Yeah. So this is a question that so many people asked what is energy alignment? Oh, I love this question. So I made up the term basically. So when I think of energy alignment, I think of our main chakras, which are those rainbow dots that we see on those yoga people, but they're not just these floating dots outside of us. They are actually quite literally ingrained in our physiology. They're exactly and precisely where our endocrine glands are. And so part of what we have to understand, especially as spiritual people, as entrepreneurs, is that when we are undergoing stress or unrelenting stress, that is, it is, as entrepreneurship is kind of that way, as all the decisions we're constantly up against, when we're feeling stressed and burdened emotionally, or even just in our in our mind, it starts to embed in our physiology as well as our energy. And so it can create stagnation, it can create blocks. So when your energy is out of alignment, you know it. You feel stressed, worried, panicked. You kind of go into that heightened state. Things can feel dramatic. It can feel like you can feel this constant agitation versus, and I kind of like the, the imagery of a person who is standing with their floaty but pushing up the river. Like it's just hard, okay, versus alignment that, everything starts to feel like it's clicking. It might not all be easy, but you're getting the signs, you're getting the messages, you're redirecting and redirecting and moving along with a flow, with an ease, with a trust, with grace. And so that imagery would be a person in that inner tube floating down the stream as it bends and curves with every single part of the river. So energetic alignment in your business looks like you're listening to your intuition, you're listening to nudges, you're putting things out there that feel incredible, even though they might scare you and it's big, and but you're still do, following your heart and the mission that's, you know, to do this work in the world. Your energy alignment basically is feeling good. Hmm. Being out of alignment is not feeling good. So we're doing all we can to get into alignment, whether it be, like I just said, getting out in nature eating whole foods, making sure you're hydrated, making sure you're moving your body, getting plenty of rest, connecting with your spirit team. All of these different faculties help with your energetic alignment. And oftentimes people are dehydrated. They're not eating foods that are nourishing. They're not moving their body and they're wondering why they feel like hell. And it's like, well, I mean, this is like basic for me. I did a challenge last year about called Intuition Month, and the challenge basically was to do those five things on a daily basis and see how you feel. <laughs> and more than not, people kind of fell off because it's too much. You know, it's too much to consider living at that level, and we we get upper limited. We get to this place where, well, I feel really good. What happened if I felt this good every single day? And we get to that point where, like, well, that would be weird. I can't feel this good every single day. And I think that's part of the challenge is doing light work. And I'm sure you have your own version of it. But like, I stopped drinking alcohol years ago because it just took too much effort and energy to try to get back to just like status quo. I would drop down really, really low. And I know the work that I do, I have to be very, very high energetically. So it was like, eh, it's just not worth it to me. And my binges are typically like in the form of sugar or something like that. I'm not like that wild any these days, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I like that we're talking about how there's resistance around living at a higher level because it's an important conversation. We don't put intuition or energy alignment sometimes first because I think that we're so focused on the day-to-day -day activities or the, what's easy, mm -hmm. what's really convenient. And it's learning a different routine or learning something that works really well for you and what feels really good in your body. And I like how you knew 
wait a minute, I'm noticing that my energy is dipping down with alcohol and it might be different for somebody else. Like it could be a specific food, totally. something that you know, is going on. And I noticed a change for me with meat. So yeah. I haven't eaten meat since, oh my gosh, 2011 in the beginning, I think, or something like that. So it's really different and you've got to pay attention to your body and your energy and, and what works for you. Yeah. So this answers some of the other questions, you know, how do we know if our energy is off, which you said, eh, simple form, you don't feel good, you don't right? feel Something's good. off, right? <laughs> yeah. And for feeling great, it can be you're feeling in alignment, like yes. this is how I'm feeling. Yes. So I did want to ask a question that someone asked here about chakras, because you mentioned it. Mm-hmm. I love working with chakras. But what is your favorite way? It's different, I know, for everybody. What's your favorite way to align your chakras? What's my favorite? That's a great question. What's my favorite way? So for me, recently, I've been channeling a lot of this, like, beautiful, iridescent rainbow energy. And for most people, you when you go through, like, a meditative process of opening your crown chakra and then your third eye moving sort of down, like, as a process... I've done this so many thousands of times over my life that I can literally like snap my finger and that whole thing has cleared in a line. So part of what I've been doing and really kind of having fun and playing with is clearing my system with this beautiful rainbow iridescent energy. And I feel this almost as though there's like this beautiful beam of rainbow light pouring down through my crown chakra and then blasting out through my main chakras and then opening out into my auric field and releasing any cords or anything that doesn't belong in there and just opening up my container to the highest and best energy. And it's almost like a atomic blast. <laughs> like it's just like a beam of light that opens up and it's like, Whoa! and so it's like the intention is clear, align, balance, And that's really it. So channeling that energy through, that's been my my favorite way. But I also like to go systematically and go through slowly as well or have other practitioners work on me kind of slowly and systematically as well. But that's what I've been really having fun playing with. I love that. That sounds really amazing. So sometimes I think for me, it's been really helpful for somebody else to work on my energy, you know, especially if you're just feeling burned out or you're just so tired But I remember really clearly, I was going through a relationship breakup years ago, and I asked for this beautiful white energy, and there was some gold in there that came through, and it was like it came through the top of my head, all the way in my chakras, and came out to my aura, like you said, and removed the cords. I could just see the cords dissolving. It was just so beautiful. So if you're listening, there's no coincidence here. Try out that visualization yeah. <laughs> that Emily was talking about. And I would speak to cord clearing as well, because a lot of people use the term cord cutting. And I don't know why it's the term it is. I don't know where it came from, but I just caution people against that cord cutting. Because if you think of like, if there was a cord from me to Whitney, one stuck in her, one stuck in me, and we cut the center of it one still stuck in her and one is still stuck in me. And so when there's still that resonance, guess what happens? The cord rebonds. And so just having that visual is really helpful for people to understand. Well, you can actually, I I typically work with Archangel Michael for cord clearing and I envision him and I to clear the cord from the inside out. So imagine if there's a root system to literally push out the root system and clear and contain the entirety of the cord and clear that and bring in that white healing light in. So obviously that's a process and I'm not trying to teach people how to do it, but I'm just (laughs) word of caution (laughs) of like of cord cutting. Yeah. That's so good. You know, I've never thought about that. That's so true because when I talk about it, I see them dissolve. Yeah. But I've never gotten it of, oh, yeah, you're right. Like some people are just cutting that cord. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So good. And you also said it too, dissolving and clearing. Like that's exactly what you want to do. You want to do that. Oh, that's so good. Transmute Okay. So a lot of people ask some questions about negative energy. Like how do I you know, get rid of it? We're talking a little bit about it. But I like this question because 
the question is, what is the most important thing to do to release bad energies holding us back? <sighs> to not know specifically which they're speaking of, which bad energy, I mean, it's up for interpretation. I don't necessarily think of good energy versus bad energy. I think energy just is. So when you think of an energy that is not supportive to you or similar, like what we were just talking about, clearing our system from any energies that don't serve us at our highest level. So that can include things like people who are jealous or other energies and entities. It could be other people's cords into our energy field that are kind of draining us, but they're not necessarily like bad. They're maybe just like cool friends and clients who are just super like connected with us. So I don't want to paint it good or bad. I would just use the intention to clear and release any and all energies that are not serving you at your highest level today. And then mm. holding up this beautiful container around you, thinking of like Glinda the Good Witch visual, you know, this beautiful bubble of light around you, and then imagining it just being impenetrable. Nothing's going to get in. And this almost like a mirror type energy on the outer edge. So anything that's kind of coming at, it's like that phrase that that kid, you know, you like, what I'm rubber, you're glue, whatever bounces off me and sticks to you, that, <laughs> that <laughs> with your aura. So you're setting this intention of this strong container. And I think, you know, this is the really the number one mistake that most coaches and healers and leaders are making is that they're not starting their day. And certainly between their clients that they're client facing, they're not clearing their space and setting that container. So then they're going into their, their work day or client to client to client. And I like, I actually have slides officially now with this person who's got a smiley face with this beautiful white sparkly suit. And at the end of the day, they have like paint splatter from everybody they've talked to all over them. And they're sad. They have the emoji, so the emoji cry face. I'll have to show you sometime. But that's a, it's like, that's what you do when you're not setting a, a container or just a simple intention to be clear, aligned and balanced throughout the day to be a clear channel for whatever needs to come through and clear and release anything that's not supporting you at your highest level. And doing that every single time you interact with somebody. So I was just telling you before we recorded, like I have like so many calls today and I've just been like sitting here in five minute meditations clearing myself. And I mean, that's what you have to do to maintain your level of being grounded and connected and allowing yourself to be a clear conduit. Otherwise, I'm just kind of like dragging everything from my day into the next thing, into the next thing, into the next thing. So it's a really good idea to really set a clearer container for yourself. Mm, I love that answer. I also heard you say intention, and mm. that's been coming up today. This is the third time it came up. I'm like, yes, this is really important. Setting intentions are so helpful. I just saw like this clip on, I don't know, some social media I was on, whether it was like Oprah was learning about the power of intention. And then all of a sudden my friend voice texted me about intention and how important it was. And you're talking about it. So I do think that is just part of that, what you said, so important and powerful. But you mentioned meditation and that you're doing these five minute meditations. And we have a question actually about meditation. Oh, and perfect. How often daily do I meditate for energy alignment? Can you speak to that? <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Let's actually answer that when we come back after this okay, quick great. break. I always forget. <laughs> All right. We'll come back in a minute. As a professional psychic medium, I've done tens of thousands of readings, but I felt a call to move more fully into teaching intuition, but I still get so many requests about doing readings. So while I don't do readings anymore, I have brought in some very trusted colleagues who are now available for live one-hour readings on Zoom. If you would like to book your psychic medium reading, go to messengerofspirit.com forward slash appointments to see our available readers and schedule your Zoom reading today. All right. I'm hanging out with Emily Ahrens and she's answering your questions about energy alignment. And so we've braked on the question, how often should I meditate for energetic alignment? So Emily, what is your answer? It's the same as how often should you wash your hands after you go to the bathroom? <laughs> it's the same. It's as simple as that. 
if you think about it, okay, if I'm going to go to the bathroom, I'm going to wash my hands afterwards, right? It's that process of being clean and clear after something. So it's a matter of really how clean and clear are you wanting to be? Sometimes we think of it in terms of like, I mean, I guess I maybe it's just me, but I think of like diet culture when I've had friends who are like diet starts on Monday and there's like this definitive point where like you have to start with the diet with clearing your energy. You can clear it as often as needed. So like I've said, I've been clearing myself literally all day long and I will continue to do this until I go to bed. For me, it's second nature. So every time I hang up a call, I start toning, I start clearing, I'm burning sage, I'm envisioning white light, I'm envisioning the rainbow light. Like it becomes routine for me. And so the other thing I do is I go outside and I ground myself. For example, like I did a call on Money Blocks this week and the energy was so bonkers. It took me going outside, laying in the actual snow and then like eating some food and then going back outside again, then eating some more food and like really coming back to ground myself deeply because my energy was so like, I felt like I was in like a hot air balloon. Like I was just like, whoa, like, and it feels so good. So it's like getting high off your own supply, you know? And I was feeling awesome, but I'm like also tether. Like you are going to float away, little lady. So part of that is how often is how often do you want to feel great? So I would say at minimum, the bookends, the morning before you get up out of bed, you can clear yourself and then set your intention. How do you wish for your day to go? How do you want to feel? And at the end of the night, when you're putting yourself to sleep, clearing your energy, I think it's also especially important for the highly sensitive folks like us to make sure that you just set a clear intention before you go to bed. Because like we were talking about on my podcast around dreams you can have all kinds of energies with you as you're going to bed. And like, I don't know how you are, but for me, I stopped doing live interactive videos at the nighttime because it would take me a really long time to clear myself, to come down, to really ground, and then to sleep soundly after that. Even if I could ground myself and quiet myself enough to sleep, my dreams would be interrupted with stuff. (laughs) <laughs> oh yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, for me too, I had to stop watching like certain kinds of programs or TV because I felt like it would invite the energies. So I actually forgot to clear my energy before I went to sleep because I'm dog sitting and we haven't. It's so nice. We, You're we dog sitting dog right now. I am. Me yeah, too. She's a, Oh, no way. (laughs) I love it. I had a a 19 year old dachshund that passed away over a year ago. And so we've been animal free for a while. So it's nice. But I just was kind of distracted, right? And so I had this clear vision of waking up, but I wasn't really awake. And the TV was on. And I saw all these things in my room. And I even saw, this is this going to make you laugh, Slimer from Ghostbusters. Like yeah. I saw Slimer from Ghostbusters. And so I was like in this astral plane, clearing all <laughs> these things. And I just had no sleep. So I think it's so important to clear your energy. That's such a good point that you made. But I do want to ask you, because I get this a lot, and I heard you say what you're doing today, how long do you you feel like somebody needs to meditate to clear their energy. One minute. I mean, let's not overthink it. And you can combine it with going to the bathroom. Like you, like, I think people believe that meditation has to be 15 minutes before it counts. And I think it's complete BS. Part of what got me into the meditation practice that I'm in today as part of my life, it's just a constant part of my life. I started to use a tracker and I would count every day I did at least a one minute meditation. And that got me in the habit of like, oh, wait, I can do this literally right now. Like, I'm in the, you know, we make excuses, but then we can scroll on social for 15 minutes straight and not even realize it's been that long. Right. So when you wake up in the morning before you wake up, like open your eyes, get out of bed, 
just a minute of deep breathing and set in yourself, going to the bathroom, just a minute of breathing, just a minute of breathing is all you really need to just recenter yourself. Imagine yourself clear, aligned, and balanced, set that intention, hold that container, bada bing, bada boom, we're in good shape. But you also do need the deep cleansing as well. Like that's not going to be like your forever plan. That's like get you through the day. And then I would imagine you would have, whether it's a monthly or biweekly sort of deeper energy clearing or some modality that you could do. Mm, yes. I love that answer because sometimes people say, well, I mean, I only have like five minutes, so the meditation is not going to be really impactful. Actually, it's a one minute. Like seriously, <laughs> you can you can do this. You can. And sometimes people focus too much on the deeper healing and don't do the maintenance. And I think the maintenance is so important. And one of the questions that we had too is how do we keep our energy in alignment when we're around negative people all day? So you've answered a lot of this, but I think that when somebody's around a negative environment and it could be a little hard for them to change or whatever it is, they might need something a little deeper. Mm. I don't know. I wanted to ask you that just to see if you had a different answer or a tip if somebody's in that kind of environment. Yeah, for sure. So there's a lot that I do personally to equip myself before interacting with difficult people, people who have weird energy. Some of them are my family members, so they're not going away anytime soon. They could be a co-worker. So first and foremost, back to setting your intention. You cannot control other people. You can only control yourself. And so when you are clear and aligned in your own self and set the intention that you are going to be clear and aligned, you're going to feel amazing. You're going to feel vibrant. Doors are going to open. Connections are going to be made. It's going to be an awesome day. I'm going to be so joyful today. It's going to be the best day. When you set that intention, then like the crappy people who you might be interacting with, like it's some for some weird reason they're not going to be getting on your nerves. They're not going to be doing that thing that irks you. They're not going to be even there sometimes. Like they're literally not physically there to do the thing that normally would bother you. And the other thing I do, I set up energetic waterfalls. Fun little <laughs> pro tip. I set up yes, energetic. Please. <laughs> I set up <laughs> like energetic. Say it again. I set up energetic waterfalls over my thresholds of my doors. So if I know people are coming into my home, right? If they're coming into my home, because this is my sanctuary, even though I have wild children and a dog, and like it's not peaceful, like lily pad life, but it is mine. But I'm also a Cancerian, so like my home is like everything. So energetic waterfall over the doorways where people are going to come and go. So what this energetic waterfall is doing is just cleansing and clearing them of anything that is in their field that is not conducive to my home environment to stay at its highest vibration and Mm -hmm. to facilitate beautiful interaction. So like, you know, there are times I host Thanksgiving with like 30 people. And so like, you can't manage, like, I can't sit here and meditate myself like, oh, I'm holding this bit. No, I have to set the intention through my house that it's also going to do that. So that's the second tip. The third is you can program a crystal. So like I have these little cute, teeny little, tiny, polished friends. And whoa. <laughs> she's like, no, I want to talk about it. So I we don't have to talk about it. But what I like to do is I set that same intention with a crystal or I connect with like which crystal here is going to help me to hold my vibration at its highest level. Because I'm going into, you know, whether it's a Facebook Live or a sales conversation, or you're going to ask for a loan from someone, or you're interacting with a terrible boss. I don't know. Having a crystal in your hand and then programming it and put it like in your pocket or in your bra and just knowing that it's like set it and forget it, it's going to do the work for you. There's so many different ways that you can help to hold your own container so that it's not impacted by the negativity or the vibes of other people. And um, also say no, (laughs) say no, just don't, if you can just just don't, don't. (laughs) yeah, just don't like, like that's the beauty of energetic alignment is that you have a real strong yes and a real strong no. And so for better or for worse, like I don't do anything I don't want to do. And so 
there are people like I'm dog sitting and the person she keeps reaching out like, is everything OK? I mean, let me know if it's too much. I'm like, would you just stop? Like, I'm fine. Like, <laughs> if it was too much, I wouldn't be doing this. Like, you don't understand. I don't just say yes to people like if I'm going to hang out, like I have a hard yes and a hard no. And so when you have that, if you feel that like, I don't want to see that person, then if you have the ability to just like, don't, don't see that person. <laughs> if you can't avoid Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Oh, so good. Well, thank you, Emily, so much for being on this podcast. And I love just everything that you said. It's going to be I so know. helpful for so many All right. Well, I am going to be posting our podcast episodes in the show notes. Please check out Emily over at emilyarons.com. And we will link to some of our old episodes. And you definitely want to check out the episode that she just published yesterday. So thank you so much for being here. And this has been another episode of the Spiritual and Ambitious Podcast. I'll be back with you next week. But until then, here's to staying spiritual and ambitious. Thanks so much for listening to this episode. And if you loved it, would you please share it with a friend? I would also love your review and a reminder to subscribe so you never miss an episode. You can find me at messengerspirit.com and you can take the four intuitive languages quiz and find show notes there too. If you want to connect on YouTube, Facebook, or Instagram, you can find me at messenger of spirit. I'll meet you right here next week. Here's to staying spiritual and ambitious. This podcast is part of the Sound Advice FM network. Sound Advice FM, women's voices amplified.